the analysis and the conclusion questions. Um, I'll tell you at certain times to pause this and work things out on your own, and I actually expect y'all to do that. Don't just like keep listening to it mindlessly and then you get lost and you have to rewind anyway. So just pause it when I tell you to pause it. So analysis question one asks you to use your data to calculate the mass of magnesium and the mass of oxygen in the product. So first thing we need is our data. And this is my data. Your data should be your data. So use your data on your calculations. Hey, look, there's a bell. Isn't that fantastic? Um, so our mass of our crucible, my crucible, was 48.92 on trial one and it was 48.99 on trial two. The mass of the crucible plus the magnesium, 49.08 on trial one and 49.18 on trial two. And then the mass of the crucible plus the final product, that white powdery stuff that we all made, was a 49.20 for trial one and 49.30. Again, your data should look different than this. And so what I'm about to walk you through should just be used as an example. You should use your data to do your calculations. So analysis one asks us to find the mass of the magnesium and the mass of the oxygen that was produced. So to find the mass of magnesium, well, you need to find the part that contained the magnesium which is right here, but it's not just the magnesium, it's also the crucible, so you need to subtract out the mass of the crucible. So for trial one, to find the mass of magnesium, that's gonna be the mass of the crucible plus the magnesium, so 49.08, minus the mass of the crucible by itself, 48.92. And so that's gonna be equal to 0 0.16 for me on trial one, and that's one six grams. And then you do the same thing for trial two, and this one actually works out to 0 0.19. And the average here is uh, incorrect sig figs. Yes, I know it's 0 0.175, but we're actually only allowed two sig figs, so that rounds to 0 0.18 grams. Oh, I totally wrote that in the wrong spot. Gosh darn it. Um, and just do this. So we'll switch that and say that this is just the mass of magnesium and this is the mass of magnesium oxide. Uh, and then for my mass of oxygen, you want to find where's the oxygen at? Well, up here the oxygen is right there. Well, I've got magnesium attached to it and it's in the crucible, so I need to subtract out that. So to do that, well, there's crucible plus magnesium. So I'm going to take this number, which is everything together, and subtract out the crucible and the magnesium. So for the mass of oxygen, that's going to be 49.2 minus 49.08 for, in this particular case, um, a mass of 0.12. Did I do that wrong? I feel like I wrote something down wrong. No, okay, looks good. So that's gonna be point, no, sorry. Ah, I was about to write in the wrong spot again. Point one two. <coughs> <coughs> Real sorry. You guys know I'm not feeling very good right now. Um, and then I do the exact same thing over here and I also end up with point one two for, huh, big shocker here, an average of point one two. Um, so now uh, I want you guys to pause this and find the masses of your magnesium and the mass of your oxygen. And when we come back, we'll do analysis part two. So for analysis part two, it asks you to use the masses that you did from number one to calculate the percent composition of magnesium and iron. So the percent composition is always some part over some whole. Well, the part in this case is going to be the individual elements, and the whole in this case is going to be our magnesium oxide. So actually we need one more piece of information. We need the mass of magnesium oxide that was produced. So go ahead, use subtraction to calculate the mass of magnesium oxide that was produced. And to do that, we take the magnesium oxide plus the crucible, subtract out the crucible. And so that ends up being 0.28 here 
and this ends up being uh, 0.31, I believe, yes, 0.31 here for an average of, uh, it's 0.295, which just works out to 0 0.30. So for the magnesium, I just want to work with my averages here. You notice I've got percent of magnesium, and this is grayed out, and this is grayed out, and the only place that you have to write is under the average, because we're just going to do the percent of magnesium of the averages. So the part that's magnesium is 0.18 grams, and the whole is the entire compound, 0 0.30 grams, and then to make it a percentage, you multiply by 100. So taking 0.18 divided by 0.3 times 100 gives us a percentage of 60%. So I'm going to put that right here under percentage of magnesium. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for percentage of oxygen, except I'm going to use the oxygen value. So I'm going to do 0.12 grams divided by the whole 0.3 grams, and that had better equal 40%. So 0.12 divided by 0.3 gives me 40%. Of course, multiply by 100. Sorry, I forgot to write that down. And of course, we do want to make sure that we obey correct sig fig. So go ahead and put a decimal right there so that we do know that that is supposed to be two sig figs. So the mass of oxygen here is 40%. So now pause it, calculate your own percentage of magnesium and oxygen, and then come back and we will do uh, analysis number three. So for analysis number three, it says determine the empirical formula of the magnesium oxygen product. Well, empirical formula, empirical just means simple. So the simplest total number ratio of mag, uh, magnesium to oxygen. And then I gave you some little hints. When calculating the mole ratio, follow the same steps that we used in the notes. Granted, it was not in the notes yesterday. Um, it was the notes from the other day. Um, and do remember, guys, this is real life. This is not, you know, some problem out of a textbook. And so things are not going to be perfect. Your numbers will not be perfect and beautiful. If they are, lucky you. If they're not, don't freak out. Uh, you know what you are expecting to get. We know, based on our pre-lab discussion, that we should have a one-to-one -one mole ratio for magnesium to oxygen. And so we're going to use that as our guide. And if it's not exactly perfect, we're going to know that we should have, you know, about what we should get. So for a mole to mole ratio, this is where we're going to go ahead and convert to moles. So real easy, we have grams, I'm going to actually switch colors here so that you can see that we're moving on to another product. We have the mass of magnesium, we have the mass of oxygen, and we can convert both of those to moles. And the reason that we're going to do that is because this mass of magnesium reacted with and combined with this mass of oxygen. So if we can convert both of these to moles, then we'll have our mole ratio. How many moles of magnesium reacted with how many moles of oxygen? So that's what I'm going to do. So starting with the magnesium, 0.18 grams of magnesium, and hopefully you guys remember how to convert from grams to moles. You need to go onto the periodic table, look up the molar mass for magnesium, and it is 24.31 grams of magnesium per mole of magnesium. And so you take that and 0.18 divided by 24.31 gives you 0 0.0074 moles of magnesium. So I'm going to write that up here, 0 0.0074. So that's my moles of magnesium. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my uh, grams of oxygen, and I'm going to convert it to moles of oxygen. So 0.12 grams of oxygen and 16.00 grams of oxygen are contained in every one mole. And so 12 divided, or point, sorry, 0.12 divided by 16 is going to be equal to 0 0.00. Uh, 75 moles of oxygen. Look at how close these two numbers are to each other. In spite of the fact that I did use real data, this was this was data from one of the groups from yesterday, and this was also data from one of the groups from yesterday. Um, 
averaging them together, you know, this one was a little bit off, this one was a little bit off, but putting them together, averaging them out enabled us to have more accurate data. And the reason for that is the more times you replicate an experiment, the more times that you're going to be able to balance out any outliers and get more reliable data. And so we were expecting a one-to-one -one mole ratio. These two numbers are nearly identical. And so it does confirm that we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of magnesium to oxygen so that our empirical formula MGO is in fact correct. So pause this, do your mole calculations converting the mass of magnesium and the mass of oxygen into moles and figuring out if you did get close to that one to one mole ratio. Uh, pause it, do that, and then come back. And I'm actually going to do some cleaning up here so we have room for the next part. Okay, moving on to the conclusion questions. Based on the charges of each element, write the formula for magnesium oxide. We did that yesterday in uh, the pre-lab, but just in case you need to see it again. Uh, based on the charges of each element, that means you're using, whoa, I need to go back to my pen. That means you're using the hill of oxidation numbers and the periodic table. So magnesium, According to the periodic table, it's in group two, and according to the hill of oxidation numbers, that means magnesium has a positive two charge. And then for oxygen, oxygen is in group 16, and according to the hill of oxidation numbers, oxygen will have a charge of negative two. Two ways to do this, least common multiple or crisscross. I can actually just look at this and go, hey, look, their charges are the same but opposite, which means they automatically cancel each other out, and the expected formula should be M G O. Uh, and then conclusion question two, the literature value for the percentage of magnesium in this magnesium oxygen compound is 60.3%. Literature value means that's what you are expected. Wow, we're getting stuck here. That's what we expect to get. And we got 60%. We only had two sig figs here. This has three. And so what we need to do, we're going to calculate the percent error based on our ex, um, experimental, this being the expected, and then I gave you the formula. It's expected. Why is it doing that? <laughs> Every once in a while it gets stuck. Expected minus. experimental and do this first remember we put parentheses around things that you want to do first and then you're going to divide that by the expected and again it is a percentage and so you take this whole thing and multiply it by 100 so go ahead pause this um, plug in your numbers here and solve for your percent error and then uh, step or conclusion question three says, is your percentage of magnesium value too large or too small? Um, and what experimental errors might specifically account for this type of deviation? So if you got something higher than 60%, then that means your percentage of magnesium is too high. And what are some things that happened during the experiment that could have caused that? flip side of that, if your percentage is less than 60.3%, then your percentage of magnesium is too low, and what are some things that could have caused that? And I do expect you to be specific. Human error is not specific. Something splashed out while I was doing this experiment could be specific if you explained how that would affect your results. Um, this does require some in-depth analysis of how errors in your original data could affect your final answer, and it does help to work backwards. So, you know, this number, this percentage of magnesium, that came from your mass of magnesium. So what are some things that could have caused this mass of magnesium to be too big or too small? Or flip side of that, let's say your magnesium was too small, well then that could mean that your oxygen was too 
big, so what's something that could have caused your oxygen number to be too high? I expect you guys to put some thought into this and not just write down the first inane thing that comes to your head. Think about this. Talk with your group and come up with an answer. And then once you guys are done, um, you can turn this in and you are done for the day. I hope this video helped you guys work your way through the math of this. And if you do have any questions, feel free. You can come by and see me. I should be back on campus around uh, probably noonish. Um, well, probably before noon, but you know, whatever. Come find me if you have questions. And I will see you guys on Thursday. Don't forget, test tomorrow.